Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Allwine, and I'm going to be reading to you chapter 13 from our love book, Pi. Now, some singing is required in this chapter, but I'm not going to sing, so you're welcome. Chapter 13. The reason Mr. Hammerslat's name had sounded familiar to Alice was because he was one of the two people Mr. Ogden had mentioned having witnessed her Aunt Polly's will. Polly Portman had requested that Mr. Hammerslot be present when she signed her will, and then she had sent him back to Cincinnati with a copy of the pie crust recipe, which he promised to keep under lock and key until the day she died. I don't understand, said Alice. I thought Aunt Polly left the recipe to Lardo. She did, honey, said Alice's mother, just not the way we thought she did. It appeared that Mr. Ogden had missed a small but terribly important detail in Polly Portman's will. When he'd read the will aloud to Alice, he said that Polly had left her recipe to her beloved Lardo and her beloved cat Lardo to Alice. But in fact, what she had written was that she'd left her recipe to her beloved Lardo, in all caps, and her beloved cat Lardo to Alice. Polly Portman had a gift for pie making, and since her greatest pleasure was sharing that gift with others, she had decided the best thing to do would be to leave her pie crust recipe to the company that made Lardo, so that they could print it on every single can. Anyone who wanted it could have the recipe now, but there was more. In exchange for the pie crust recipe, Mr. Hammerslot had agreed that after Polly passed, he would come to Ipswich with two things in hand a contract for Alice to write in an advertising jingle for Lardo, and a contract for Alice's mother to sing it. That afternoon, after Mr. Hammerslot left, Alice went out to the kitchen and told Charlie everything that had happened. Good gravy, he said. Congratulations. Alice felt a song coming on, but instead of pushing it away, she sang it right out loud in front of Charlie. A cat, a key, a clink, a clue, a chocolate pie, a friend that's true, a mystery that is finally through and now a happy ending too. Aunt Polly had sent her a message that day, one that she would never forget. Alice was a songwriter and she was grateful for the gift she had. The fact that she had already, was already on her way towards making a first million dollars was just a scoop of ice cream on the pie. If you want, I'll tell Nora Needleman I made you ask her to go to the movies with you. Alice offered later that afternoon. She and Charlie were always playing a game of checkers on the living room floor. That's okay, said Charlie. It's not like asking a girl to go to the movies means you have to marry her or anything. Mrs. Anderson invited Charlie to stay for dinner. While Charlie called home to ask permission, Alice went out to the kitchen to check on the pie. When she opened the oven door, the smell of fresh baked peach pie filled the room. It didn't smell the same as Aunt Polly's pie, and it certainly didn't look the same, but she knew that in that instant that everything was going to be okay. She could almost feel Aunt Polly lean down and kiss her on the forehead. I'll miss you, Alice whispered, and she was sure she heard Aunt Polly say, I'll miss you even more. Dinner that night at the Andersons' house was meatloaf and mashed potatoes with gravy. For dessert, there was peach pie. Alice's mother served up four slices. Looks delicious, said Alice's father as he lifted his fork. It certainly does, said her mother. Alice looked at her parents and smiled. She had wondered if she would ever feel happy again. And now she knew the answer. Charlie touched the edge of his piece of pie, then licked his finger. Good gravy! What's the matter? asked Alice. Is it awful? See for yourself, he said. Alice took a, bit, a bite of pie. The crust was a bit rubbery, and the filling wasn't nearly as good as Aunt Polly's had been. But to her surprise, it actually wasn't half bad. Pretty good, she said. What do you mean, pretty good? Charlie cried. It's great! And they all four burst out laughing. In the fall of 1955, several important things happened. On Monday, September 5th, a housewife in Haddonfield, New Jersey, won the Blueberry Award for her groundbreaking Mississippi mud pie. 
thus ending Polly Portman's 13-year winning streak. Jane Quisenberry was not available for comment. In November, the town of Ipswich got a new mayor. Henry Needleman decided he had had enough of politics and didn't want to run for re-election. Since the vote for Needleman posters were already printed up, Melanie simply pasted her picture over her husband's smiling face and won the election by a landslide. Right before Christmas, the new Lardo jingle began playing on TV. Alice saw it for the first time on a Saturday morning during a commercial break for Sky King. Mom, Dad, come quick, she shouted. It's on. Lardo, you really ought to try it. Buy it. Bet you'll be a fan. Lardo makes a perfect pie dough. If you want to know the secret, it's written on the can. L-A-R-D-O-O-O. -O -O -O. Lardo. See? Aren't you glad I didn't sing it? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle, and Alice's father putting down his paper. Ruthie, you sound like a dream, and Alice, that tune of yours is downright catchy. Alice's mother beamed and put her arm around her daughter. Did you notice, George? Every single one of those rhymes is perfect. Now that's what I call talent. Alice and her mother had gone to New York City to record the jingle. While they were there, Alice sent Charlie a postcard of the Empire State Building. She signed it, Love, Alice. When they returned home, Ruth Anderson went straight to Reverend Flowers to ask if maybe they could use another voice in the choir. She'd also started singing in the shower, which made everyone in the Anderson household very happy, especially Lardo, who sometimes liked to sing along. Polly Portman had spent her whole life expressing gratitude for the gifts she'd been given. She baked pies for the pure joy of it and delighted in the pleasure of it brought it, pleasure it brought to others. Alice could only hope that she would be able to live up to the example that had been set for her. Sitting on the couch that December morning, snuggled between her parents, Alice decided a good place to start might be right where her Aunt Polly had left off. Thank you very much, she said, to no one in particular and she meant it with all her heart.